Okay, so my name is Hanaya Davis and I am obsessed with politics. So basically how I start off every day is I wake up, I put on my glasses, and then I check Twitter. I check CNN updates, Al Jazeera news articles, NPR podcasts, and sometimes when I'm feeling super retro, I will read a newspaper. But most importantly, Twitter, because that's where I get to find out what's going on in the political world real time with trending updates and all that jazz. So yeah, basically Twitter is just a social media application where you get to convey your message about whatever you want to talk about in 140 characters or less, using photos, videos, or GIFs, and popular topics can range anywhere from sports, film, fashion, whatever other nonsense you want to talk about. Um, it's kind of like your personal little diary, but I love it most importantly because of how political it is. And you get to see everything that's going on in the world real time as it's happening with hashtags and trending updates. So basically how I got into politics, I was born into a very political family. I'm the granddaughter of a senator. I'm the niece of a former vice president of American Express. So I was always around these people who just like knew a lot about politics. And I was like, hmm, this seems kind of cool. Maybe I'll get into this. And then I did. And then in middle school, I made a Twitter. And it was all downhill from there. Cause like Twitter and politics are just like bros, BFFs. And I got to find out everything that was going on. And like politicians will tweet and like, They'll have conflicts on Twitter. Like everybody loves some good Twitter beef every now and then. And it's just really cool to see how like everybody has access to it. Cause all you have to do is make an account and get your handle, get your name, 140 characters and like you're good to go. So it's really cool to see how politics has completely been shaped and molded by this social media tool, just where everyone has an opinion. But that's kind of where you start getting into some issues because since everyone has a voice on Twitter, you can basically say whatever you want. So you can make up stuff or you can debate things and it gets really, really tricky really quickly. So like some of the pros of it are, it is easy to use and their user base is growing on a daily. Like it's just been constant growth over like the past five years. And it does keep you like updated real time. And you do get raw uncut content from celebrities and politicians which makes it more personal. But then the cons are, you know, you have politicians who can, like I said, say whatever they want. And the good, the bad, the indifferent, they can spread whatever lies they want to spread. They can deny truths. There is no true censorship on Twitter, so fact checking is really required of a good Twitter user. You know, you need to make sure that when you're seeing something that a politician is putting out there, you're checking to make sure that that's actually true, or if it's not. Uh, there's false narratives, there's alternative facts that literally everyone and their mother can believe because if they see it on Twitter, they just assume that it's fact. And this causes all sorts of trash scenarios that come about where, you know, people have gone on believing that there were true things happening when it was really just something false that had been made up on Twitter. So one of the major complaints about Twitter is that often young people can be very easily misinformed. They can read whatever, like I said, the false, the true, and they can believe it. And that can cause a lot of issues because you know they are believing all these lies on the internet. But then at the same time, they do have access to all of the truths of the internet. And I think that's a really cool thing about being young in this era of all this new technology because we have access to educate ourselves on any of these pressing issues right now. So I think when that narrative spread about millennials that like, you know, we're selfish, we're entitled, we're lazy, like, okay, maybe that's true, but we're also incredibly informed and we're very educated and we know what we're talking about because you know, we have Twitter and Facebook and all these other social media outlets that inform us of everything that's going on in the world. So Twitter in the modern era has really allowed for us as you know, citizens to see way more into the personal lives and the daily lives of our president, which is something that like 50, 60 years ago, we could have never imagined just seeing. You know, in a newspaper, you might've read a cute story about the president, but to see, you know, what your president ate today or what he was watching or what he was doing, like that's, that would have been completely out of this world. So it's really cool that Twitter does give you those indirect updates on the president's life or on any politician's life on a day-to-day, hour-by-hour update as well. So the future of politics is uncertain, but it is probably going to be a fact that Twitter will have some influence on that. And it'll be really interesting to see how Twitter continues to mold and shape the Twitter and political atmosphere that we have currently going on. So we saw in this past election that, you know, Twitter was the most important thing for some of the candidates. And I think it will continue to be that way. And it'll be really cool to see how the future kind of impacts that as we move forward. So as Twitter users, we do shape the political atmosphere. We determine what we want to see. So we should be out there putting out the content that we want to see in our political world. We should be tweeting at these politicians. You know, they see what we're saying. They know what we're talking about. Get some stuff trending. If you want things to happen, like get it done. We have the power as Twitter users to do that. So yeah, follow me on Twitter. I post some pretty dope content. You know, I have memes, lots of them, and obviously informative stuff. 
And make sure that you're fact checking stuff as Twitter users because you don't know. Could be true, could be not. So that's why you use factcheck.org. And uh, yeah, it's me signing off. <laughs>